there's only one of my exes that I really have regrets about. Ten years ago, I was living in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and I was on this six-month tourist visa working under the table as a nanny. And I was getting to the end of my six months, and I really didn't want to leave yet. I loved my job, I loved my friends, and best of all, I had just started dating this Irish guy, Ryan Nolan, from County Cavan. And all the Irish guys have an amazing accent, but Ryan Nolan's accent was especially magical. So everything he said, I was just under a spell, like if he suggested what to eat or where to go or whatever, I was just like, yeah, 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 because of the accent. So I came up with a scheme to try to stay longer. Um, and it involved um, leaving the country and re-entering. So Northern Ireland, Ireland, technically two different countries because Belfast is technically in the UK. So my whole plan was that I would le fly out and then fly back into Dublin. So I'm entering the Republic of Ireland and then sneak up over the border on a bus because no one's checking the border. And that way my whole tourist visa would start over but in a new country and everything would be legit and I could just go back to Belfast and listen to Ryan Nolan read me the dictionary. <laughs> so I tell Ryan Nolan about my scheme and he goes, ah. Oh, Marta, you don't want to go to Dublin. Listen, it'll be crawling with police and immigration officers. You want to go to Knock Airport in the west of Ireland. It's tiny. You'll walk right through. Nobody will look twice at you. And I'm under the spell of the accent. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll go to Knock. Yeah. <laughs> so I buy my tickets. I make my plan. It's 24 hours before the end of my six months. And I fly out of Belfast into England and then into Knock Airport in the west of Ireland. And as I'm coming into this tiny airport and getting in the line, I realize Ryan Nolan was sorely mistaken. The immigration officer, as he looks into my eyes and into my soul, he knows, and I know, and he knows that I know, that he knows that he's going to tell his wife at dinner tonight, I caught one today, love. He's asking me all the questions. Where are you going? How much money do you have? What are you doing for a living? Where are you staying? How come you don't have a bigger bag if you're traveling all over Ireland? Which is an excellent question because usually when I fly, I bring every piece of paper with me because I think I'm going to get so much done on the plane. I have tax returns falling out, recipe cards because I'm meal planning for a month, <laughs> self-assessment form for life coaching, usually, but this time I don't. And then he asks who I'm staying with and what her phone number is, which they usually ask, write it down, you go right through. So I gave him the name and number of an actual friend in Dublin thinking he wouldn't call them, but he did call them and I hadn't prepped her because I didn't think. He goes back in the room, calls her, catches her off guard, comes back out and tells me, she's not expecting you, that's deception. I'm putting you back on the plane you came on. I said, okay, what's gonna happen when I get off that plane? Because I'm a planner. <laughs> he goes, They'll probably deport you, not to my concern, I'm not letting you in, go stand against the wall. So I go over and stand against the wall, and then I remember the one thing about Knock is, there's this like holy shrine there that Catholic pilgrims from all over the world come to visit and pray. So this whole group of pilgrims is getting off a plane, all clutching their rosaries, looking at me, like, what's she done, you know? And the immigration officer comes over and he escorts me to the plane and points me, out, points me out to the flight attendant, like, keep an eye on her. And I, at this moment, I am really regretting my outfit choice. Because if I'd have known that everyone was going to be looking at me like I was some sort of mysterious international criminal, I would have done everything differently. I would have got, like, my hair blown out and, like, a trench coat with a fur collar, leather gloves. I, I just didn't think, but as it stands, I'm wearing my red pea coat, my hair's a mess, I've got my glasses. I just am like way too mousy for what is going down right now. <laughs> so I'm on the plane, going back, I'm like leaning forward the whole time, like I'm going to jail and it's gonna be really cold and I can't sleep when it's cold and there might be like one blanket. It'll be threadbare, like the blanket that my mom has in the guest room. And I, I might get a sandwich, but in Ireland, they put mayonnaise on all the sandwiches and I hate mayonnaise. The toilet paper is going to be rationed. I'll get like two squares. It'll be one ply. So I'm thinking this. And then we get off the plane and the line is moving really, really slow. And as I get to the front of the line, I see it's because they're checking everybody's passport against my picture. So I say, it's me. And then they take me back into the little room. And it's me on one side of a desk and this young officer on the other. And part of me wants to be like, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And the other part's like, be cool. You know how to act like something you're not. You've been in how many job interviews? So we have a real, the, the officer's really nice, and he's kind of my age, and we have a real, like, getting to know you conversation, and he shows such an interest in my life and my finances, and 
my work and where I'm going and where I came from and everything. It's basically a date. <laughs> Until he says, you have 24 hours to leave or we'll deport you. I say, okay, I will leave, but I'll look for you on Facebook. So <laughs> I go back to Belfast and I call Ryan Nolan to tell him what happened. And he's like, oh, Marta, I feel terrible. It's my fault. I'm the one who told you to go to knock, but I can't be mad because of the accent. So... I'm just like, no, it's okay, it's, it's my time. And now every time I fly international, I have to answer a lot of uncomfortable questions, but my real regret is I've never heard Ryan Nolan's voice again.